Now, when did you get involved with pipe bands in Scotland? It was after you uh, got established as a solo piper here. Yeah, that? yeah, I was playing solos all all the way along, and yeah. and uh, was 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 going to university to become a school teacher, so I'd have my summers off to come over here and compete, like Mike was doing. Mike Mike was a school yeah. teacher, so uh, as soon as the first week in June hit, you were off until. The first week of September. Now it's 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 in August now, but basically the 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 second week in June until the Northern Meetings. Yeah. Okay. All that time uh, uh, you had your summers off to do your piping schools, to teach at your piping schools, then come over and compete, and that's what I was doing. I had a band in Houston, Texas, called the Hamilton Pipe Band, uh -huh. uh, and um, uh, quite quite a number uh, of of those pipers are now playing with the St. Thomas Alumni Band. Um, and so uh, we we got the best overseas band in 1992 in grade two. Um, uh, I got a couple of prizes at Bridge of Allen and at Inverkeithing, and um, so um, won a couple of U.S. championships. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and um, so always involved in pipe bands ever since I was ever since I was a boy. My my first band was was the Dunedin Middle School Pipe Band, which yeah. is basically uh, P7, S1, S2, uh, as far as in this country goes, and then the Dunedin High School Band, and then uh, that really wasn't a competing band. Um, the, at that time, I was sent up to Ontario, like what we spoke about, to, to play with the McNish Distillery Band. Um, uh, Sandy Keith was teaching piping in Dunedin at this time. He, he spoke to me about uh, playing with the band um, City of Dunedin band that was coming over to Scotland and uh, so one of those years I didn't play with McNish I played with City of Dunedin and um, um, so anyway when I moved over here uh, my, my uh, Christine worked at the bank and then taught dancing at night time so um, uh, she, she encouraged me in order to talk to Roddy McLeod about teaching at least some of the nights that she was teaching. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, uh, I spoke with Roddy, and I, w I was an evening instructor at the National Piping Center, which was just known as the Piping Center at this time. And when I was there, he spoke to me about playing with the Scottish Power Pipe Band, and that's how. And that, because that he was started. pipe major at that. He time. was pipe major at that time. Yep. And the, the fighting centre had opened up about nine to six. That's right. Yep. So that was just more or less in line with you moving across here yeah, a couple of years later. Yep. And building up the, the piping staff, if you like. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you mentioned being a teacher. I, I take it was a. What's, did you do any daytime teaching in schools I, or something? I, I never completed my education at university. Ah, right, okay. So the 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 when when Mike Cusick bought out Macintosh bagpipe supplies, ah. I became the reed maker and uh, uh, left my education. I only had about a year and a half to go to concentrate on the reed making. So, so did you were a studying to be a teacher in USA at the University of Houston. That's okay, right. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, but. Hey, I remember speaking to Macintosh, hey, Jimmy, about his rig making briefly, mm -hmm. and he um, showed rig making to various folk. I understand. I don't want to go into that particularly for a certain reason. Uh, but did he show you rig making? Well, the the yes, he showed me. Uh, um, for a day and a half, okay. he, he showed me what he I, I, he did. Uh, latterly, um, in between me going to Houston, I I immigrated to Canada, and um, uh, I went up there and I worked for Colin McClellan. Hi, because so, I, I thought that he had shown you some. Absolutely, yeah. He he he, he was. It was one of those types of things. I was playing. I, I was playing with the Dunvegan Pipe Band, which was Scott McCauley's band, and Colin McClellan's band, and um, we're talking. Um, uh, we're talking nineteen late eighties here. So, um, um, uh, so I, I what I did. I I I did all the prep work 
for Colin. Uh -huh. And I was living in, in, in Monklin, which is near Maxville. So I prepared the cane in order for Colin to start doing what he, he needed to do. And so I was able to watch him. I was able to, to catch the bug, as you say. Uh -huh. And I, I was doing all the dirty work, all the apprenticeship work, all yeah. that kind of stuff. Happily. Doing it happily. And um, 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 so that, 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 that's where I caught the bug. And how much time are we talking about here? Probably seven months of prepping for him and that kind of a thing. I, I couldn't use his chisel, but I could get my own chisel and try and do things. And it, 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 was, it, it was tragic. I, you know, actually, it was very, very difficult in order. Anything that I did that was specialized, that, that, that you needed the experience for, right. wasn't doing it. And Colin really wasn't showing me as far as teaching uh, me to yeah, show me, yeah. just, just kind of... You were picking up. I was picking it up by, yeah. just by watching him. So, um, uh, lived in Ontario after immigrating there for, for about nine months. And um, um, it, it, it pff, um, wasn't enjoying it. Wasn't what it was cracked up to be because Colin left to go back to university because he wanted to do teaching. So... Uh, the reed making thing kind of fell fell by the wayside, so uh, that's when I moved back to to Houston, Texas. Okay. Or that's when I moved to Houston, Texas. Uh, I never lived in Houston prior to that, so I went down there, and my brother-in-law, uh, who's married uh, to my oldest sister, always said to me, "I've got two sisters, Diane. Yeah. Diane's the oldest. He went to Houston to to become a lawyer." To go to law school, he he always said to me, "Hey, this is great. You follow in your dream of being a piper, stuff like this. Get an education, get something to fall back on." So when I gave it a shot by trying to live the bagpiping dream up in Canada, and it really didn't work, and it really wasn't working, I took his advice, moved to Houston, and uh, started started going to school, com community college at first, and then university afterwards. Um, and uh, Mike was teaching bagpipe at that's. At this time, at St. Thomas Episcopal, my two sisters were teaching dancing at the school, St. Yeah. Thomas Episcopal, and uh, Mike was a, a student of Jimmy McIntosh's. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy sold his business, Mike bought the business, and um, um, so it, it, that, that's how it grew as far as... Um, um, so are you it? assisting Mike down in Houston, Texas? With this business of reed making, no, Mike. Mike was never. Mike never made a no, reed. No, I, I, I wonder about that. Yeah, no, no, no. no. It, it, it was. I, I was the guy that had somewhat of of a background. In, so, what in was the actual making. business then? Well, you know, bagpipe supplies. Okay, right, right. I'm with you. Reeds, yeah. channers, uh, 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 general uh, supplies. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Jim, Jimmy had a had a, had a very very good business as far as it goes there. Seasoning brushes, CDs. I mean, and, and any type of thing. And it wasn't the, the there wasn't many of those businesses over there at that time. Yeah. Um. So, uh, so so Mike did the the packaging of this, and then it was it was my job basically to try and produce. I take it most of that stuff was imported. Uh, uh, well, bagpipes anyway. Oh, I absolutely. Did. Yeah. I know the Gibson. And made the pipes along with in Dunbar, yeah, uh -huh. uh, up in Canada, and yeah. they made good instruments. Yeah, yeah. All uh, reports. My, uh, my, I take it that uh, that would be some of the input, but also Scottish uh, uh, products as well. Mike, Mike just dealt with. Um, he only handled Scottish bagpipes. He okay. only handled Hardys and Shepherds. Right. So those were the two, and then and then and then some nails and that kind of thing. And of thing, course, you know? Shepherd came across latterly uh, and uh, assisted the summer schools that uh, Mike uh, ran. Yep. And uh, Mike spoke uh, glowingly about Shepherd being a big help uh, to him. Yep. Uh, yep. And uh, is that Shepherd's input there? Well, uh, Mike, Mike, uh, well, he. He sat back and he, he learned that Bob took a group of kids wow. from the juvenile grade up to grade one. And so uh, he, he figured if there was a man that could do that, that could teach me how to do that, then, then that's what he did. And he would hire 
Bob to come out and to teach the school and all that kind of thing. And yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And and um, so 